Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, and today's tutorial slash unboxing is on testosterone cypionate in injection form and in compounded cream form. Now, these two are both hormones, and the hormones that I'm talking about are actually produced by the body, especially in young men. So the, the testosterone hormone, which is also produced in women, is usually surging at about 16 till about 26, and then from that point forward, it fades. In some people, they are lucky enough that it stays high or elevated till about 50s or late 40s. But in most of my patients that I see in the clinic, and that could be skewed, the fade that I see, I can have 30-year-olds come in with testosterone in the 200s to 300s. There's a litany of different things that cause testosterone to drop or block success. A couple of them would be poor sleep or at least fragmented sleep, unanswered stress during the day. And a lot of you will say, well, I'm not stressed out, but I beg to differ that the average American lifestyle has stressors injected all day long. The average American usually doesn't recognize them until the landslide comes down, and, and it's usually at the age of 50 or so when there's just way too many stressors. And then it's non-negotiable that you have to do something to neutralize stress. And that usually means mindful practice, nature therapy, a psychologist, something of that nature to develop parasympathetic response. And I'll do another video on this as we march through winter. But it's important to know that those things that some people think are commonly not a big deal can really screw up either sex drive or muscle building or can actually make you gain fat and weight faster than you expect. Also, mood disorder, uh, brain fog, problems with digestion, even immunity. There's a lot of things that get impacted when you have low testosterone. And this can happen to men or women. I have a lot of female patients that have given birth, gone through life change, or just reached midlife and got caught by surprise. And their sex drive is decreased, their brain fog is turned on, weight is at an unsurmountable level, and they've never been that way before. Energy is just very hard to find. Although there's many different reasons for that, one of the lowest hanging levers to pull on would be hormones. And testosterone, even in a woman, would help. So the typical amount of testosterone that I give for an average guy is about 200 milligrams per week if we do injectable or 200 milligrams per day if we put a cream on. For a woman, it's about a milligram and women can't do uh, injectables. At least I won't suggest it, but uh, that's why the creams are important. And you can't just get this cream at a local Walgreens or CVS. You actually have to have compounding pharmacists make this at the discretion of the doctor ordering. So the fact that you have a compounded prescription usually means insurance will not pay for it. For men, lucky enough, if you can tolerate the injection, this is, by some insurance, is covered. But in most cases, especially if you're younger than 60 or your testosterone level, the total testosterone hasn't dropped to lower than 300, insurance will really fight back and not want to cover it. But luckily, if you uh, ever shop using the good RX coupon, I had my last guy go to, I think it was Meyer Pharmacy or Walmart, and he paid like 30 bucks for 12 weeks of testosterone injections. So I think that's fair. That's cheaper than one month supply of vitamins, at least one of my vitamins that I take. I have heard that the price for the cream is increasing, so hopefully it doesn't uh, go too high and hopefully... My compounding pharmacies will work with my patients at least. The bottom line is that uh, usually when you go to your wellness checkup, your doctor, especially if you're Medicare, your doctor will not check testosterone levels. Uh, it, it's usually going to be uh, kicked back from the insurance company or the lab saying this isn't covered or you have to sign a Medicare waiver, meaning that if you get build, you have to pay because it probably won't be paid for by Medicare, which is crazy because if you look at who has the lowest testosterone, it's usually guys 65 years of age or older. I do state that a lot of the people that come see me who have a journey of finding a healthy, sustainable lifestyle just haven't gotten into balance yet until I help them formulate that plan, that they also could use some testosterone. And definitely, unless you're Blue Cross Blue Shield, or have a very good insurance company that's following you, uh, you'll probably have to pay out of pocket. The difference between 
uh, 30 bucks and 100 plus bucks. Uh, obviously, if you're on a budget, you might have to go with the shots, but then you have to endure the shots. So I usually will suggest uh, that most of my men that need it, when they get it, they fall in love with it because they feel youthful again. And then the price doesn't matter because they realize what they've been missing. Same thing with my female patients who go with the cream. I have had many times when I just tell them to apply the cream every morning for at least a couple weeks, up to 12, and at first they'll not really notice too much, but eventually as the testosterone starts to accumulate and starts to work its magic, and the other medical problems start to reverse themselves, people will notice energy returning. Well, they'll notice muscles responding, even to a little bit of exercise. They'll notice fat starting to melt away instead of accumulate for the investment that you're doing with starving yourself or sweating bullets in the gym. We all want to see the investment pay off. But in some cases, exercisers, intermittent fasters, people who are just trying their darndest to make a lifestyle change because they've accumulated so much weight or medical disease or prescription medicines, when they try to invest and turn things around, they might be at the, pr the point where testosterone, estrogen, progesterone isn't there anymore. So all their investment is really good. It'll probably work, but it'll just work a little bit at a time. And that's so demotivating. It's nicer when you invest and you see outcome. You invest and you see return. Immediately would be nice. That's not always tangible. In many cases, when you accelerate gains, it would be motivational to keep people in the game. Like now, that's why I'm talking about these things for winter is that we have November, December, January, February. And those are gonna be cold days, they're gonna be dark days, they're gonna be long nights. And uh, if you already have issues with uh, joint pain, arthritis, depression, fibromyalgia, you know that these times of the year will be tough to get through. And then there's holidays if you've lost anybody. It's just so easy to go into seasonal affective disorder and have it accelerate during these four months. Hopefully March will be nice and then we can get outside. Shameless plug, the uh, shamrock shuffle usually is in March. Up until about two weeks ago, there was uh, it was supposedly canceled. So I was going to hold my own St. Paddy's Day uh, 5K. However, because the shamrock shuffle is so organized, that's usually two things that they have. And it's really cool if you've never been there. And it's usually pretty decent because there's nobody downtown, but it's a 8K run if you're a runner, which is a pretty decent distance, all on Sunday, or a two mile walk. And uh, last time I was there, I'll see if I can put a link to it. I pushed Eddie. Uh, Eddie Ramirez was a motor vehicle accident a survivor and he lost his legs. I pushed him through the two miles and it was really cool. We got a story from NBC, but I'll be doing it again. I haven't this Eddie already moved. Uh, hey, Eddie, how are you? Eddie already moved, but uh, it's too far for him to come back. But I'll probably be looking for my next uh, patient to assist me or I can assist with in doing a two mile walk. If any of you need motivation, it's only like 39 bucks to enter. I think it's a good cause and it'll give you a reason to keep on at least training and walking for winter time. Usually everybody just buttons up, gets the long parkas on, and just forgets the winter and just waits until spring. But I think if you do that, the chances of you gaining weight and becoming weak, and possibly, especially with COVID, uh, having a setback in disease process is high. So I'd say stay engaged, shorten your endurance and your exercise investment. Don't be so tougher on yourself as far as cutting back to 800 calories a day. I'd say let up a little bit, but match the amount of activity you're doing, uh, daily activity. And that doesn't mean exercise. It just means everything you're doing. Take the steps instead. Do a little bit of short burst activity. And then hopefully we all reach February and don't have any bit of a speed bump to our health or lifestyle. Usually what the thinking is, is you just give testosterone and the people with low testosterone, male or female, will be fine. And that's kind of true. But my goal is not to keep anybody on testosterone for life. The goal I have is if we can get you testosterone to take care of the deficiency that we find, whether it's deficiency found on data, meaning blood testing, 
and, and this is the blood testing, you have to ask your doctor for total and free testosterone. And if you are going to pursue taking testosterone supplement, male or female, you should get estradiol levels. I always say with my females, I also include a progesterone level. I didn't put it here, but the testosterone free and total, the estradiol and the progesterone are pretty decent markers to tell you at this point in time, your numbers are like this. Uh, for men, I think that's fair. And, and yes, men do need an estradiol level because the testosterone that you have in you and the testosterone that you might be taking will, by default, the liver will convert it to estradiol to get rid of it. So in some cases, you actually might get a lot of conversion to estradiol and then you'll get man boobs or you'll gain fat because of an overwhelming amount of estradiol or estrogen. You don't want that signal. You just want the testosterone. So that's why it's really important. Those of you who get started, it's really important to have that blood test that I suggest every three months or so. And it's just as important to note how the liver and the blood count is because that's why I have this in parentheses. Liver and blood count should be taken because there's other things that change in the body when you are maximized or optimized on the hormone. I like to call it the energy hormone because uh, it has been used to, in my patient population, to generate energy that has been missing. And it's such a nice thing when I have patients start it. I usually will wait about three weeks and I'll call. It'll be like I'm talking to somebody that I haven't talked to in a long time because the demeanor is just different or the weight is different. Uh, I had one guy tell me that he, he actually moved on to a different job He's running uh, something for Abbott, and he's doing great. Sex is great. He's getting there as far as erection, which is another thing for my guys. Erection will improve. It won't improve overnight. Again, with physiologic dosing, it will improve in time, just like muscle will improve. So if you have low testosterone and you exercise, resistance and cardio, the two types of exercise, uh, you can usually get a muscle pump. Uh, you'll get a feeling of uh, euphoria because that's what the body needs. When you do something good, the body rewards you with an overwhelming feeling of, this is cool, do it again. Now, sometimes with low testosterone, you won't have that feeling, or you'll endure the exercises, whether it's cardio or resistance, just by sheer talent and knowledge, but you won't get the gains. Either you won't hit your personal records, or you won't hit your max lifts, or you won't see changes in body morphology, and you'll you might even gain weight. That's very frustrating. But when you maximize or optimize on your testosterone level, all of that will be like you're 20 years old. So uh, this is not meant to be an anabolic steroid. It's meant to just supply what you're deficient on for a short time. So back to the exercise and the reason I'm doing this in a short amount of time, I expect that when my patients start to taste youth again, male or female, that they enjoy it for a while, but then they get working. They ch fine tune their activities to continue with cardio, but apply more resistance. I really think if those of you who don't do any resistance exercise uh, understood, and I honor that, but those of you who do resistance exercise, do you know the drive that you get after finishing a resistance circuit, whether it's upper body, lower body, uh, CrossFit, uh, Jack LaLanne, calisthenics, push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, all that stuff gives your body a reward. Just like I mentioned with the cardiovascular fitness, when the body tastes something, when the brain and heart tastes something that you do that it likes and it finds beneficial to survivability and longevity, then it rewards you with saying, do this again. Here's your hormone. Thank you. It's important to feel that, but it's also important to gain that and you motivate, I think that if we motivate the people that are on testosterone to invest in more resistance, you'll actually grow muscle, you'll burn fat, you'll have better endurance, you'll think better, and all that will actually have you produce your own testosterone, believe it or not. Between the two types of exercises with uh, cardiovascular fitness, running, cycling, swimming, um, power walking, hiking, and then resistance exercise with uh, calisthenics, resistance exercise, bands, uh, anything, or CrossFit. Usually the resistance exercise and the muscle that you stimulate with resistance produces higher peaks of testosterone than cardiovascular fitness. 
There are studies that support that. It's tough to analyze everything, but I think uh, through time, especially the most recent times, the research has just been uh, coming out in reams and I like the results. And I think it's supportive of saying that if you build up enough muscle, you will be able to sustain testosterone on your own. And trust me, I know a lot of people will say, well, I don't want to get big. You know what? It's taken me, what, 59 years to just develop this, and that's not that big. But if you think that you're going to be on this and suddenly get huge, you know, fine-tune your investment. I train people at the endorphin effect. And even in a year's time, if you're 20 to 30 years of age, it probably won't show up that fast. Now, there's something about starting an exercise routine, especially resistance, when it's novel, when it's the first time you've ever done it, you will have a muscle stimulation that is uh, fast, quick, you'll notice it, and a fat burn. But as you get older and as you uh, pull out the old exercises that you were shown before, if the muscles have tasted that type of exercise before and you just turn it on again, you might not notice the fast gains that you expect, mostly because it's not novel anymore or you're old, so it's okay to be old. Again, I'm 59, I'm looking forward to 60, but what I'm trying to do is influence my patients as much as possible to optimize on muscle and exercise as much as possible to bank before it's too late. Is it too late for a 70 year old to use testosterone? Probably, I'm not sure how effective it will be. Testosterone receptors have to work and plus, prostates might be a little bit more irritable at that age. I mean, we can use it if properly dosed, but uh, again, the other problems with that age group is, can you really get them in the gym to do any lifting? Will you be able to avoid the injury? They have to be watched a lot closer. So they have to be fine doing it. And everybody, even if you're an old athlete and you know what to do, everybody has to be taught again and guided. So uh, all those metrics and those maneuvers and those regimes that you used to rely on when you're in your 20s, they don't necessarily work the same way when you're in your 50s. So those of you who are going back to what you learned before and just applying it now, and you're like 100 pounds more, and you're stressed out because you're working 50 hours a week versus going to school, eating anything you want, and not working, just going to school, this, these two paradigms are totally different. So you can't expect old stuff to serve you in the new paradigm. And that's why you have to kind of come to me or somebody that has a little bit of experience in functional medicine to navigate the uh, direction of where you are now. Uh, just using testosterone and then not doing anything, uh, I think is a shortcut to a dead end. I would say that if you can't afford a personal trainer, you can always access me. I'll put my link for the uh, website and how to reach me down below. But there's also other integrative medicine doctors and sports medicine specialists that are out there. So try to hook yourself up to somebody that's knowledgeable. Uh, don't give up because somebody said, uh, you're too old. I, I hate when I hear it's just my age. Look at other countries and see how the, the mature, that our elderly are doing compared to the U.S. Totally different. I mean, there's a couple of choice patients that I see in their 80s, independent thinking very sharp and they're taking care of themselves, they're exercising. But if you look at the average American in a nursing home, they're gorked out, don't remember anything, don't even know who they are. And they're on like about 10 to 20 medicines. I saw one patient the other day on 20 prescription medicines. How do you, I can't even fathom how she schedules that with her memory being so screwed up. And the medicines are supposed to help the memory, but they also harm something else. I, I just can't fathom that, but it, it, I can't blame where she's where she's been. I can only hope that her doctor is trying to modify that as much as possible. But anyway, so uh, it's just a testament to say that if you can prevent aging early on and work on it before you get to that point, I think it's better. Thus, the reason why even if you're young and you have low testosterone or Forget the testosterone, even if you haven't checked this stuff and you just feel that your energy's gone, your, it takes forever to wake up in the morning, your exercises, if you are exercising, aren't responding or your muscles aren't responding or you, you're exercising, you're eating lean, 1,800 calories a day, 1,200 calories a day, and you're gaining weight, there's something wrong and you really need somebody with a functional medicine background 
and I would prefer an MD to help guide you. I think uh, my training as far as being a physician in family practice, a sports medicine fellow and an integrated medicine fellow have put me with a certain skill set that's different than my colleagues. And I love going to the gym. I love being in nature. I love leading hikes. I love teaching yoga. I love all that stuff because it serves me. Trust your doctor, uh, trust the system, but also do your own research and be an advocate for yourself as far as what's best for you. Uh, don't carry too many diseases. Try to get rid of them one at a time. Uh, if you are on medicines, that's okay. But uh, also ask or inquire, what do I have to do to get off this pill? And then just have that as a project. Then the next pill and then the next pill. And if you do that in a sequence properly, you'll be hitting health. If you do that properly and hit health, you have longevity on your side. There's no guarantee, but it's worth trying. So hopefully this gives you a couple of ideas of how to return to youth. If you don't want to go down the testosterone way, there are supplements that also push testosterone a bit. Be careful, especially some of the bootleg stuff. Uh, talk to your doctor or you can become one of my patients. Uh, there's other lookalikes that you can find out there. They're sold by other companies, horny goat weed, L-arginine. That, that, that sometimes you can see some studies that kind of squeak by and say that might help. It probably isn't going to hurt, but I'd be worried that some of the supplements that are not vetted by consumer labs or other um, third-party companies might actually have testosterone or worse, an anabolic steroid in them. So be careful, uh, buyer beware, always do your homework. If you have any questions on how to use testosterone or what kind of blood tests to get, or if you use testosterone and you have a compounding pharmacy within Illinois, put them down below. I'm always looking for other compounding pharmacies that are give a good price. But thank you for watching up until this point. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with other people, and I'll see you at the next one.